Välkomna till Avenyn. Här i Fons sänder vi dagens uppdatering. Och vi kommer att ha lite videos som vanligt här med Pinto. Och en intressant video med Cadiz. Och få lite musik här på min uppdatering. Gud vill signa er från ett soligt Göteborg. Efter min rundtur på stan så gick jag bortåt Skansen Kronan och när jag passerade Göteborgs universitet så blev jag förvånad för jag fick se ett propalestinskt läger där också vid Göteborgs universitet. Och här hittar vi en tjej, en judinna från Israel som sitter ensam vid sitt lilla tält. Vilken hjältinna, hon heter Netta Hübscher. Och hon gick med på att tala in ett budskap, vad hon tyckte om läget. Jag heter Netta och jag bor här i Göteborg. Jag jobbar här i Sverige och jag tänkte bara säga att det här är väldigt sorgligt allt som händer. Det finns ganska, ganska stora missförstånd kring konflikten och jag tänkte passa på att säga någonting om det. När jag går och passerar förbi den här demonstrationen om Gaza så, så håller jag faktiskt med att det är ingen som vill ha krig och de flesta i Israel definitivt inte vill ha krig. De vill leva i lugn och ro. Det finns alltid en liten, liten minoritet som är kring kriglisten. Sådana finns i varje land. Det är tråkigt. Vi har också radikala människor. Det har varit en radikalisering i Israel. Jag ska inte förneka det. Men... Och visst har de kanske lite större makt nu för tiden än tidigare. Men det här har inget med saken att göra egentligen. De representerar inte alla Israel. Vi vill ha fred. Men problemet här är att när jag går förbi och tittar på skyltar så säger jag inga... Um, jag, ser, jag ser inga skyltar som, som pratar om fred. För fred händer mellan två um, suveräniteter som kommer överens om någonting. Och här ser jag bara skyltar som vill bli av med Israel, krossa sionismen, exempelvis uh, boykotta, uh, from the river to the sea, allt det här som handlar om att ta bort Israel helt. Jag ser kartor som inte innehåller några symboler av Israel, som att man vill verkligen visa att man vill bli av med hela begreppet Israel. Och det tänker jag är oroväckande för vi, ska, vi, kommer, vi går ingenstans. Vi kommer bli kvar i vårt land och vi vill ha fred. Vi vill att alla ska känna sig hemma och ha det bra. Men vi går ingenstans. Vi kommer inte bara sluta och försvinna. Och, dö. Um, och det är därför som jag har väldigt svårt att hålla med allt som jag ser på skyltarna. För skyltarna säger ni ska inte finnas. Ni i bemärkelsen jag och mitt folk. Det står på skyltar att vi inte ska finnas. Och det kan ni inte vara överens med. Det kan ni inte hålla med i. Så jag tycker att det här är väldigt, väldigt läskigt. Otroligt skrämmande. Otroligt skrämmande. Uh, och här sitter vi och vill påminna bara de som går förbi att... Um, allt det där startades på grund av en, ett förjävligt slakt, slakt som har ägt rum 7 oktober. Och, och vi, vi vill bara påminna att våra, våra människor sitter förfarande i, så kidnappade i Gaza av eh, monster. Och någonting måste göras åt det. Det var bara det jag ville säga. Förlåt, jag.
Och då ser vi ju Egypten vända Israel ryggen också. Det är ju tydligt här att det är profetiska saker på gång och USA och västvärlden har och EU framförallt har ju hållit på och manipulerat och ja vad det här kommer att innebära det är ju en ökad press på Israel givetvis som nu har strider både inifrån och sen nu allt detta då som troligen till slut kommer att tvinga Israel in i en falsk fred. Egypt just threatened Israel in a pretty significant way. But does it mean anything? Let's watch this video and find out. All right, folks, let's get into this. As you know, I have uh, quite the interest in any of the articles that directly relate to Egypt, especially as it sort of associates itself with Israel. As many of you know, my mom and my dad were both born and raised in Egypt. I uh, was raised speaking Arabic as a second language. And so much of these geopolitics are really familiar to me for a lot of different reasons. But this article caught my eye. I'm going to read it to you, and it is uh, very interesting. By the way, this article is found in JNS, which uh, there's a lot of very interesting articles you could find there. But let me read this to you. We'll get into it, and we'll start having a conversation about all the different uh, geopolitical implications of what we're reading. The article says this. It says, Egypt threatens to axe treaty with Israel over Rafah operation. Now, let's get into this. It says this, Egypt has threatened to suspend its 45-year-old peace treaty with Israel if the latter further expands its offensive against Hamas in Rafah. Cairo has lodged formal protests with Israel, the United States, and European governments following the Israel Defense Forces invasion of eastern Rafah, which was launched last week. It goes on to say an Egyptian official cited by the report who spoke on the condition of anonymity said the operation has put the peace treaty at high risk. The peace agreement with Jerusalem is a strategic choice, Egyptian Foreign Minister Sama Shokri told reporters uh, later on Sunday. He goes on to say peace has been Egypt's strategic choice for 40 years and it represents a main pillar of peace in the region to achieve peace and stability. Uh, Turkey State News Agency uh, is what actually reported this. But- en veckosammanfattning av Israels humanitära hjälpinsatser för Gazaborna. 1806 pallar med mat levererades via den nya flytbryggan. 2065 lastbilar, långtradare alltså fulla med bistånd, anlände till Gaza via gränsövergångarna. Vilket är dubbelt så mycket som förra veckan. Man har gett bort 352 000 liter bränsle, centra sjukhus och härbergen. Förutom dessa 232 extra lastbilar som har kommit. Kolla in den här videon. Det ser inte ut att gå någon direkt nöd på folket trots världsopinionens medieförvrängningar. Videon är tagen den 25 my operation to retrieve the remains of kidnapped Israeli hostages from a Hamas terror tunnel in the Gaza Strip while Hamas tried and failed to film the kidnapping of additional Israeli soldiers in Jabalia. The IDF spokesperson's office has confirmed that there was no kidnapping. However, Hamas wasn't finished with its psychological warfare, releasing another video over the weekend showing the remains of additional Israeli hostages. Finally, there was also some dramatic action at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 233rd day of the war against Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran, and the list just goes on and on. The IDF spokesman announced on Friday that the bodies of Orion, Hernandez, Hanan, Yablonka, and Mikhail Nissenbaum were recovered from the Gaza Strip. The three bodies were found with the assistance of a tip from the Shin Bet Intelligence Agency. IDF soldiers from the 98th Division and the 75th Battalion acted on this tip, locating a tunnel shaft, eliminating the terrorists guarding it, and recovering the bodies. I'm making it sound simple, 
but it wasn't. This was a very dangerous and complex night operation in an area where Hamas remains very strong. The soldiers who carried out this operation were from elite units of the Yalam Engineering Corps and the Shin Bet's own operational units. It was the result of months of fieldwork and intelligence gathering and analysis in close coordination with other intelligence and operational units, all while keeping plans secret, which is not easy. The success of this mission is a cause for cheer, but we remember that the war continues and the IDF is fighting even now as I'm recording this video all throughout the Gaza Strip in the north, center and south. The IDF spokesperson's office gave information at today's briefing on operations which have resulted in the elimination of dozens of terrorists in face-to-face -face battles and airstrikes. The forces of the 98th Division continue to operate in the Jabalia area in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, locating and destroying rocket launchers, tunnels and military buildings, as well as large stocks of weapons and ammunition. The battle in Jabalia is proving to be one of the most violent encounters of the entire war so far, so please be in urgent prayer for the IDF soldiers engaged in this battle. As well, the 679 Brigade under the 99th Division has seen heavy action including battles between tanks and terrorist forces armed with advanced anti-tank missiles. Division 162 has been deployed in the Rafah area and has discovered multiple tunnel shafts and underground bunkers packed with weapons and ammunition meant to be used against IDF troops. Instead, the IDF has taken possession of these weapons and they will soon be disposed of. The Air Force has also been in action eliminating terrorists with pinpoint strikes and providing real-time intelligence to ground forces and air cover for operations. The role of Air Force drones in locating tunnel shafts is crucial as a terrorist emerging from a shaft is immediately observed by overhead drones and the location is passed on to the computerized network and from there every IDF soldier in the area receives this information almost immediately. This process takes less time than it just took me to tell you about it and it is a major reason why so many terror tunnels have been found while IDF casualties have been relatively light. It is very important that you, while IDF troops have had great success in fighting this kinetic war, the Islamic terrorist organization Hamas has focused on psychological warfare attacks against Israel. Another example of this came in the last 24 hours as a spokesman of Hamas gave a speech on the Al Jazeera network that was defined as dramatic by the Qatari propaganda agency. The Hamas presentation included a video that the terrorist said showed the kidnapping of Israeli soldiers into a tunnel shaft in Jabalia. However, the IDF spokesperson's unit immediately issued a statement that no IDF soldier had been kidnapped. The IDF has conducted an urgent investigation into the issue, speaking at the commanders of all the units in the area to inquire if a soldier was missing and this investigation was concluded that everyone is accounted for and no one was kidnapped. So please continue to spread the truth. Now, more than ever, share these videos with anyone you know. Take a minute, click the follow button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you like to see more videos like this one, please consider making a financial donation by clicking the donate button or going to a website at www.tvn.org Israel. Switching now to the diplomatic front, an editorial published over the weekend by the Wall Street Journal reveals that the diplomatic battle behind the scenes surrounding the operation in the southern city in the Gaza Strip, Rafah. The editorial said, in part, that the question of future control of Gaza is legitimate. To give some background, for months the Biden administration has strongly opposed Israeli military action in Rafah, the last stronghold of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The mantra of the American administration was that Israel does not have a credible plan to evacuate 1.3 million Gazans from the Rafah area in Gaza. However, the Israelis continued anyway and two weeks later nearly 1 million civilians were safely evacuated which many governments all over the world have been sure was impossible. 
The IDF operation in Rafah was considered a red line by these governments because they had talked themselves into believing that there is no way to carry out a large-scale military operation without causing immense numbers of casualties among the civilian population of that city. However, the Biden administration has now changed its tone with a senior official saying that Israel has updated the plans to take into account some of the concerns that the Americans had shared with the Israelis. He added that the operation in Rafah may create new opportunities to get the kidnap deal back on track. This is how diplomacy works sometimes. And candidly, I'm not complaining about who gets credit for what as long as the problem gets solved and the IDF is given the time, space and resources it needs to finish the job in Rafah and eliminate the Hamas terrorist organization. That's because Rafah is critical to any day after any plan since nothing will be possible if Hamas remains a military control in the area, especially on the border crossing between Gaza and Egypt. Rafah is the great strategic prize in this war because it is through the smuggling tunnels running underneath the border with Egypt that Hamas is able to bring its supplies of weapons and ammunition, narcotics, cash, and everything else it needs to keep threatening Israel. It is also through these tunnels that Hamas is sending its terrorist forces out to get training in Iran, in Syria, and elsewhere in the Middle East. Israel has already located about 50 tunnels that run under the border between Rafah and Egypt for smuggling purposes. There are probably more and they must be found and demolished so the IDF can create a buffer zone along the border and cut off Hamas from Egypt. The question of future control of Gaza is legitimate and some operations are being discussed that Israel might be able to accept. But the bottom line is that no other party, whether it is the Palestinian Authority, the United Nations, a coalition of moderate Arab states or even a US-led force of NATO soldiers and administrators will fight Hamas for Israel's sake. Israel must fight and defeat Hamas if there is going to be any chance for a return to security and peace in this region. With all of that in mind, after Hamas is defeated, the IDF will probably have to be the administrative authority in the Gaza Strip for some time until some kind of civil government can be set up. The good news is that despite all the dire warnings and the diplomatic maneuvers, the 162nd Division under the command of Brigadier General Itzi Cohen has been deployed and is making rapid progresses in clearing Rafah of Hamas terrorists. They are already in control of 60% of the Philadelphia Corridor and as I said, almost a million civilians have been safely evacuated from the city. On that note, it must be said that IDF soldiers operating in Rafah report that they are finding weapons, ammunition, and terrorist infrastructure in almost every building, including schools, medical clinics, and even private homes. There can be no doubt that many Palestinian residents of Rafah were not involved in terrorism against Israel, but there is almost mounting evidence that many of them were involved indeed. Whether actively or passively, willingly or against their will, these people were aiding and assisting Hamas in its war against Israel. Meanwhile, the IDF is working hard to find and demolish all the assets of Hamas in Rafah, whether it is headquarters, tunnels, weapon stockpiles, training centers, or rocket launchers. Senior Hamas leaders are also being targeted, and it's important to remember that Hamas does not like to admit it when these leaders are eliminated. In the case of Marwan Issa, it took several weeks for Hamas to issue an official statement about his death. Meanwhile, Hamas continues to attack the IDF positions around the Rafah crossing, but despite this, eight shipments from Egypt are expected to resume transiting through this crossing in the near future. Meanwhile, shipments from Egypt are being redirected to the Karen Shalom crossing, subject to an Israeli security check following a direct request to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi from US President Joe Biden. Once again, please help us by sharing these videos on YouTube and subscribing to this YouTube channel. It really helps us reach more people about the US built pier off the coast of Gaza City 
is up and ready for you to watch. Back to the news. A story over the weekend highlights some of the difficulties the Americans have encountered using this pier. A small American military vessel that was being used to transfer aid from the large cargo ships to the pier went off course amidst high waves and strong winds, ending up on Ashdod's beach on Saturday evening. Ashdod is a city in Israel. U.S. and Israeli forces were quickly dispatched to the scene to rescue the crew with assistance from local lifeguards. The pier began operating last week following months of preparation, which reportedly cost around $320 million. The trucks carrying aid from the pier into Gaza City are meant to be delivered to warehouses administered by the World Food Program and UNRWA, the United Nations Work and Relief Agency for Palestinian refugees. But many of them have been looted by uncontrollable crowds before they made it to the warehouses. The U.S. has said that none of its troops would set foot on Gazan soil, making it impossible for the United States Army to provide security for these shipments. And the humanitarian organizations don't have any ability to provide security themselves. A solution must be found as the United States has admitted that little of the aid being delivered from the pier is making its way to the warehouses where it's supposed to be going to. To continue with the report, we were all horrified, I'm included, for the headlines around the world saying that the International Court of Justice in The Hague ordered Israel to immediately stop the operation in Rafah. However, a quick examination of the details shows that the headlines don't reflect the reality of the situation. Although this move by the International Criminal Court of Justice certainly adds to the diplomatic pressure on Israel, which is increasingly described in the world as isolated, this ruling does not require the cessation of fighting in Rafah or prevent Israel from defending itself. The ruling of the ICJ was passed by a 10-2 vote of the 12-judge panel, with only Israel's Aaron Barak and the representative of Uganda, Julia Sabutina, voting against it. This ruling states that Israel must immediately stop the military attack and any other action in the Rafah district, which may impose conditions on the Palestinian group that can lead to its complete or partial destruction. In the order, the judges emphasize that this provision is related to Israel's obligations under the International Convention for the Prevention of Genocide, the claim of violation in the war in Gaza is the basis of South Africa's claims against Israel. In Israel, this wording is interpreted as not preventing the continuation of activity in Rafah as long as they work to reduce as much as possible the harm to the civilian population. In the statement by the National Security Council and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, this issue was directly addressed, saying Israel has not carried out and will not carry out military activity in the area of Rafah that creates living conditions that may bring about the destruction of the Palestinian civilian population in whole or in part. In other words, there is a false narrative being pushed in the world's media and Israel is not going to put up with it this time. Another demand that the judges of the ICJ made on Israel was that the Rafah crossing will be opened. But Israel is not a party that is preventing this crossing from being opened. It is Egypt who is refusing to open its side of the crossing. This was not mentioned all this time by the ICJ. And this is very strange. As far as the IDF is concerned, their side of the Rafah crossing is already open, while Egypt is refusing to allow trucks to enter the crossing from its side of the border, and Israel can't force Egypt to change its policy. The question now is how Israel will act in the next step and the Israeli government sources emphasize that South Africa is expected to continue to use its lawsuit in The Hague to demand orders to stop the fighting. We heard from them in the last 24 hours saying the elements against us do not miss an opportunity to reach the General Assembly or the Security Council. There have been already dozens of discussions by the Security Council. We estimate that they will try to do everything, including inside the council. We think there are enough arguments here that we are not violating the order. However, 
there is a possibility that despite the truth being on Israel's side, we will nonetheless be blamed for violating this ICJ order. Then the issue will reach the door of the Security Council where only an American veto could prevent a strong action or statement against Israel. In any case, we will continue to update you with what is happening. So please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Most importantly, join us in prayer so that the peace of Israel will be reached, so that there will be peace in the Middle East, so that the IDF soldiers will be safe and will be able to go back to their loved ones, back at home, and for the civilian population of Israel, of the Gaza Strip, that are affected by this terrorist organization, Hamas, and its proxies and allies in this region. So please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem, and together we will win this war. Då avslutar vi den här uppdateringen med en härlig sång av Kent Ronny som heter Sådan är han än idag vår store Gud. Ja, Jesus Kristus är den samma igår och idag och i all evighet. Gud var det med er alla. Amen. Av många handa tin du synes trängt Oframkomlig är din väg av hindrens mängd Gud som for om bönen hörde Och sitt folk till seger förde Än idag kan öppna vägen som är stängd Sådan är han än idag, vår store Gud. Sådan är han än idag, vår store Gud. Än idag han hjälper alla som i tro hans namn och kallar er. Sådan är han än idag, vår store Gud. Har du ofta lidit nederlag i tro? Är ditt hjärta fyllt ut av missnöjet stor? Får de genom bönen sången, porten öppnades och fången Fördes ut att skåda himlens ljusa sol Sådan är han än idag hos store Gud Sådan är han än idag hos store Gud Än idag han hjälper alla som i tro hans namn och kallar Sådan är han än idag vår store Gud Universum vilar i vår faders famn Alla rymden stjärnor nämner han vid namn skulle han då inte tänka på sitt barn och kraften skänka Så att du och jag nå friden sälla ham Sådan är han än idag på stor ägg Sådan är han än idag Som i tro hans namn och kallar Sådan är han än idag Vår store Gud 
ska sådan nära men idag bor i stor ägg Sådan nära men idag bor i stor ägg Än idag hjälper alla som i tro hans namn och kalla Sådan när han än idag går 